Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to solve this question which states that if F is any reflection in the dihedral group DN, so we are taking a dihedral group having order 2N, correct? And R is a rotation within this group DN, so we need to determine what is the centralizer of some reflection when N is odd, what is the centralizer of some reflection when N is even, and what is the centralizer of a given rotation within this dihedral group dn so this is the question correct so you might uh, be previously knowing that whenever you have some dihedral group dn it has 2n elements within it and what are those 2n elements we have n uh, rotations within it and we have n reflections within it correct so what are those n rotations they are obtained when you divide 360 by n multiply with 0 to get the first one which is nothing but the identity element r0 then 360 divided by n into 1 360 divided by n into 2 and so on correct so you up to 360 divided by n into n minus 1 so these are your n rotations and in a similar fashion you can get your n reflections as f1 f2 f3 so on up to fn correct here the group operation is function composition this thing you know already so uh, we moreover we know what is the center of some element within the group uh, suppose we take x as some element from the group what is the centralizer of this element x it is uh, the set of all those elements from the group such that uh, those elements commute with our given element x correct so that collection is known as the center of some element x now here we wanted to determine the centralizer of the centralizer of the element f the centralizer of the element f when it is or n is odd when n is even and the centralizer of the given uh, any rotation correct so uh, here let's start by here are several points i have listed by the help of which we can uh, make out which elements are present here in all of these three correct so here you know r0 is the identity element so it commutes with every element of dn correct so if it commutes with every element of dn in particular it would commute with all the reflections when n is odd all the reflections when n is even and all the rotations as well so that definitely it would be present in all these three sets let's see what all other members are present in these three correct so this is one point for the second point when your n is even your uh, dihedral group dn contains r180 why because when you have uh, n as even when you divide 360 by n which is some even number so definitely you would get 180 as one of those numbers correct so therefore in this case we say when n is even so r180 is surely there and moreover for uh, r180 it commutes with all the elements of dn because for every even n because for even n only we have r180 uh, we have the centralizer of the element 0 is whole of the group dn the centralizer of r180 is also dn we can observe this for d4 the dihedral group giving the symmetries of a square correct so definitely it would be present in all the rotations because r180 commutes with all the members and for all the reflections as well whenever your n is even why because only in those cases where n is even we can have this member otherwise here no such member is there if it is not present here how ca could it commute with all the other members so this is the point here correct so you obtain these elements within your centralizers now let's move on to the next point which states that any reflection is its own inverse this thing we already know why because when you compose any reflection with any reflection you get the identity uh, you, you you reach back to the point where you started correct because if you flip uh, something towards right once and then towards left one so you reach at the place where you are already so this is r0 and from this definition you see your f inverse is nothing but your f correct so any reflection is its own inverse so it is concluded that reflection commute with itself 
they commute with itself so definitely reflection would commute with itself so it would definitely be present here and it, it would be definitely be present here in both the cases even your n is odd and even if it is even correct moreover you know for each x the centralizer of some element x is a subgroup of the given group this is this result we already know that centralizer forms a subgroup if it forms a subgroup so it should be closed under the group operation it uh, should be closed under inverses correct it should hold the associative property and the identity of the group so we can check all these properties for these elements correct so if you see uh, check when n is odd the centralizer of cf basically this it uh, we know it already had r0 and f within it now what other elements can we substitute here so you see if you take r raised to power r0 raised to power 1 r0 raised to power 2 and so on all of them would give you the answer as r0 so no new element is added here similarly when you take f power 1 which is f if you take f power 2 it would be f into f right what is f into f you saw it is r0 correct similarly if you take f power 3 it would be f why because f square is r0 and f that would give you r uh, f correct so uh, this is f uh, next if you see for f4 it would be r0 for f5 it would be f only and so on so we could uh, from here the taking powers of f and r0 won't help us why because we are again getting these two elements what about if we multiply them if we multiply them together we are again getting f so no new element here what about their inverses the we know the inverse of r0 is r0 so no new element the inverse of f inverse is f so no new element is uh, is uh, available to us hence the only two elements present within cf are r0 and f because uh, by the group operations no new elements are found correct so this becomes the centralizer of any reflection when n is odd now let's talk about the case when n is even when n is even we already have found these three members now let's check for the combination of these three members uh, all the properties of group correct why because cf itself would be a subgroup so being a subgroup it should satisfy all the properties of group under the operation of function composition so we already had r0 r 180 and f with us now i say f of f into r 180 is also present here why because you see r 180 is a member of this f is a member of this so their composition should also be a member of this so this is also present here and moreover you see r 180 inverse is r 180 f inverse is f correct so you see from here that moreover the power if you take the powers of r 180 you only get either r 0 or you get r 180 correct and if you take powers of f you only get f or r 0 and if you take uh, this element f into r 180 so you have a reflection and you have a rotation this is a result that if you have a rotation and a reflection the answer you are going to get is a reflection i have told you in the previous videos as well that if you can associate the reflection by negative sign rotation by a positive sign so negative into positive would give you negative which is a reflection correct so this is some reflection let's call that reflection as fi now if you take the powers of reflection you are again going to get the same reflection or r0 so no new members are found here so we only have in the centralizer of f when n is even these four members present with us now let's discuss the case of the centralizer of a rotation now i say the centralizer of the rotation contains all the members which are generated by r360 divided by n let's take the case of d4 in d4 your uh, r360 divided by 4 is what r90 so i say these are the members which are generated by r90 so what all members would be there it would be r0 r90 r180 and r270 so you can check by yourself that uh, the centralizer of any rotation if you take this is equal to this only correct and uh, moreover in every 
dihedral group dn you have the centralizer of r0 as dn the whole group and the centralizer of r180 as the whole group dn why you can check it yourself in d4 you see that uh, f the centralizer of r0 is dn the centralizer of r180 is dn correct the centralizer of r90 what is it it is the same set r0 90 r180 and r270 so this is the centralizer of r90 and this is also the centralizer of this is also the centralizer of r270 correct okay so from here you can clearly see that the rotations they commute with each other all the rotations will be a member of cr correct so all the rotations which are generated by this r uh, 360 by n would be present within the centralizer why they commute with each other let me tell you one thing you can think it by yourself if you have some circle if you rotate the circle first of all by m degrees and then by n degrees this would be same as rotating the same circle first of all by n degrees and then by m degrees why because the total rotation finally would be equal to m plus n degrees correct here also it would be n plus m degrees and you know under addition we have the commutative law so this is there so i i hope you understood this question well here my answer come out to be that uh, the centralizer for any reflection when it is odd contains two elements one is r0 and one is f the centralizer of uh, the reflection f when n is even contains four elements within it which are r0 r180 f and f r180 the centralizer of any rotation contain Uh, many elements within it which are generated by r 360 by n and the uh, in all the cases are uh, the centralizer of r 0 and the centralizer of r 180 is nothing but whole of a group d n correct so i hope you understood this question well well that is it for this video thank you for watching